PS2 characters are the best characters. In fact, the PS2 and the N64 era, era were the best era of video games, right? And so we want to recreate that because we're older now and we know how to make games. So today, we're going to make a PS2 character. So here's my model. I'm giving this one away for free. Just links are going to be in the description. I use this for basically all my games. So I can't ship the animations with it, but what makes this model cool is the uh, blend shapes. So this is the same uh, NPC model I use in Unaccessible. There he is there, right there. Uh, but I also use the model for every other uh, character in the game, including the protagonist as well. So it's versatile to a degree. So blend shapes or shape keys, I've just got them here. I've got a few here, so the first one's uh, the width around the waist. Uh, how angry he is, so we've got, it actually moves a couple uh, things on the face to make him angry or happy. And so in um, like Godot, for instance, you can set that as a negative value. Or you can set it here, depending on what you like. So we can go happy to sad right there. Oh, look, he's so happy. And look, he's so sad. And then next thing we've got here is mouth open. So this is the way that we can make them speak. Um, and obviously, uh, that actual mouth there is just a little piece of the um, a little piece of the geometry that moves up and down. Uh, the real magic is actually putting the texture in the right spot, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. But we can see the mouth move there quite cleanly with that line, um, just like his pencil mustache, very clean line. So those things together, like I said, they give you a little bit of versatility. Um, and then obviously the texture as well. Now you could attach clothing items to it at this point, but it's not very PS, PS2, is it? I mean, with PS2, everything's kind of on the same mesh, uh, and things are textured, I suppose, at least as the basis, and then anything important will stick on top as an attachment, like a hat. So what you're going to get is a .fbx file, and I'll show you what that's going to look like. Because I can't ship the animations with this file because that's just against Mixamo's terms of service. But I'll show you how to get all the animations that you want in there. As well as if you have too many animations, it's going to make your player quite big. So for DJ Simulator, because of all the different things that the NPCs can do, the character file is about 90, 90 megabytes, I think, as a blend file. So a little bit smaller, I think, as, as anything else. But yeah, it adds up. So really what you want to do is you want to get your base mesh, which is tiny, 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 small. And you want to upload it to Mixamo, download all of the animations that you intend to use for your game. And what I'm going to show you is a workflow uh, that you can use to make sure that you have a little bit of flexibility there. Let's say you forgot about another animation or two and you have to uh, do that. I'll show you how to do it in a really easy way. Uh, and one way is with the Blender plugin, but... Uh, if you don't want to, you know, install the Blender plugin for whatever reason, it is a little bit laggy, and I think it converts over to an FBX anyway. I'll show you the .glb method, which I think is probably better, but it's a little bit more tedious. So it's going to look like this, a little uh, 73 kilobyte file uh, FBX of him doing the T pose, right? And you can already see here, he's got like the little mouth, so it, it's it's almost ready to go. We just want to add the animations to it. So, again, you drag that shit into Mixamo, and then we do this thing, which is, I don't know, you can copy me here if you want, if you're not confident in where you're putting it. This is basically where I put it all. Uh, and then we want to change it to two chain fingers as well, because they're like little mittens, pretty much. Uh, while that's spinning around, we may as well look at the texture. Oh my god, don't hit the escape key or it'll make you do it again. Uh, this time we're just gonna wait for it. Cool, it looks good. Hit next. And then we're gonna figure out what we want. So maybe I'll just get like idle and another animation. So we'll get like two and I'll show you how. Well, we get three. I'll show you how it works. So when you find one you like, make sure it's in place as well. And then you just wanna hit download. Keyframe reduction, do uniform. Non uniform will just mess it up. Uh, and that's if you wanna do keyframe reduction. Uh, 30 is good enough, whatever. And then. That's sweet. We just download them one at a time. Just go and find all the ones that you want right now. And don't screw around with that non-uniform stuff. Trust me, I downloaded like 20 or 30 animations and they, they were just not usable. And I didn't find out till I'd already like imported them into Blender and then put them in the game engine. It was a pain. 
Yeah, we get the injured walk as well. Bam, download. All right, this one, this one's going to be the last one. Then you want to open up a blender and then import one of those. So we go import, and then we want to choose injured. Now we'll choose walking. That'll do for now. All right, perfect. Now we've got one. And then what we want to do is then go ahead and now import those other two. So we can hold control here. So it's injured walk and dancing twerk right here. So when I import them, we see all of them. Now obviously they're going to stack on top of each other. So what we have to do is just delete these secondary copies and delete the humanoids as well. So there's four things we've just deleted then. Keep that in mind. Two meshes and two armatures. But now when we go to the armature and then go to animation mode over here, we'll switch this over to the action editor from the dope sheet. My face is probably in the way of that, but it's like... It's like right here. <laughs> uh, we'll go to the action editor. And look, so we've got three animations and we've only got one armature and one mesh. So that's how we add in animations. If we wanted to do it again, we just do that exact same process. We import the FBX and then we delete the armature. We delete the copy, right? And you'll know if they're the, the wrong one because I have dot zero zero one and dot zero zero two after it. And now we can do one of two things from here. We can save this as a blend file bring it into Godot, and then we can then close this off and then open that version of the blend file in Blender, and then all of the changes that we make will real-time update with Godot. Or, like I said before, we can use the GLB method, which is the one that I prefer, because what I would prefer to do, right, is take this, export it into a .glb, put that into um, Godot, and then any time that I need to make a change to that in Godot, I'm still working on this uh, in an outside directory. So there are, there are two different ways to go about it, right? But if you want that seamless integration between Godot and Blender, at this point, drag that blend file, this blend file, into Godot, right? Do all of the Blender plugin stuff for Godot. Close this off and then open that version. Then we've got the seamless interaction between the two, right? So hopefully that actually helps someone because once I'd figured that out, it was really good for me um, when I was learning all of this stuff uh, back when I was doing DJ uh, Sim for the, the animations for all of the people in the crowd, right? But this version has those uh, blend shapes uh, added to it. But it's basically the same model. I think I changed it a little bit from where DJ Simulator was, uh, but I think it was only in that way. Anyway, I'm ranting. If we switch over to uh, the texture mode, see, texture's there. And that's because it's embedded inside the .fbx file, right? So we're going to export this as a .glb, uh, gltf, whatever. Yep, whatever the technical name is for it. So we'll call this player uh, .glb. Sure, what that'll do for now. Cool, and then we're going to go swap over to Godot finally. So we're going to create a new 3D scene. Uh, we'll name it main scene as we usually do. And we're going to save that into a folder called scenes as main scene.tscn. Perfect. Now what do we do? We import that model straight away. So we're going to create a models folder and then I'm going to import that. Sweet as. So now if I drag that into the main scene, we've got our player. And now we could go create like a, a, a new instance of it or whatever. We can just edit the children here. Double check that the animations are all working. Double check that that shit works. And now, because we didn't name these uh, animations a dash loop, which is what I recommend that you do. If you're ever, if you want to rename them, you rename them here. So you figure out what they're called. You know, um, what is this one? This one's like zombie walk. Anyway, I'm gonna rename these ones, right? So zombie walk dot loop, or dash loop. Sorry. Uh, and this is walk dash loop, and then the top one is um, <laughs> twerk dash loop. And now what I'm going to do is, well, that's actually saved. I'm going to export that again as the .gltf. It's going to say that it already exists because it's in the same uh, folder that I exported it from before. I'm going to swap over to Godot, and then I'm going to Redrag that in and I'm going to essentially re-import that. So I'm dragging it over into models and you see it's just updated and now it's called twerk. See we don't have the dash loop 
and that's because it already knows now not to stop so that animation is gonna just go and go and go and you can go hands off at this point I guess just let the game do its thing right I'm just realizing here you can't actually see the names of the animation uh, because my face is in the way so there you go this is what I mean the animation it loses that dash uh, loop that we get from going into blender right here where my face is covering right now in this section um, so anyway how do we do the textures because that's the next thing we want to do right I want you to to put your face on here so I guess we open this right here which is the player bloody bloody blah, blah, blah dot one I could probably go rename this but I'm not gonna rename it whatever so I'm just gonna go directly edit it so I'm gonna right click on it and then go open or show in file manager and then it's gonna load this up now I'm just gonna open this up in paint so once it's open in paint and this is what's cool about like like this is when it feels like ps2 because when I was younger I basically did this with uh, GTA Vice City and San Andreas models as well and this is where I learned all of this and and, and sort of this technique but um, I, I think like other things had it packed differently but like GTA was really good so if I want to go add let's say a, a cool set of glasses to this guy right so I'm gonna whoosh, some shades and then we're gonna hey and hey and then if I hit save on that and alt tab back you see it updates immediately and so this is a good way of getting that that immediate sort of back and forth but pretty much like all you've got to do is fill in the gaps and you're gonna be like oh how the hell am I gonna do that so open it in Photoshop just start importing stuff um, now the one thing that you're going to want to keep in mind here is this discoloration right here. You'll see that like it, it's kind of like on all of the things that I have, all of the NPCs, they've all got the exact same mouth. And that's just so when they open their mouth, you get that like, you know, sometimes it's got like a teethy look because of these like sort of jagged edges. But it basically ensures that the mouth is going to be a different color than the rest of it. So it actually looks like a mouth when it opens up. So what I would do is, yeah, do do anything you want, but make sure that that uh, mouth is kept exactly the same. So put it on another layer or something like that, right? Gotta put some small earrings on him. Maybe we'll um, chuck one of these little flavor savers, they used to call them, because we're living in the 2000s at the moment. The the, uh, the 2000s look right, and then there we go. You see, it's just little bit by bit, that's what you're going to want to do. And maybe in the future I'll show you how to actually unwrap a face. It's actually a lot easier than it seems, but there's not really a lot of resources online about that. And see, so even here, I haven't done it to the, the degree that I want. Like, so maybe the way that the warping works is maybe the ear shape should look more like that. You know, or like you can sort of go back and forth trying to figure out the exact shape that the ear should be in you know and then stick the ear inside that little section right there so if you want to support me you can go and check out DJ Simulator or Unaccessible go suss it out wishlist it buy it whatever you want or you can come follow me on uh, what's it called this website the twitch one that twitch website and I'll be streaming there every other day of my game dev we're working on a pretty cool uh, horse game at the moment there's a fresh void for uh, game dev content so if you've got a little hole in your content watching schedule fill it with me